Welcome to Laser Bros. Today we're doing a shop tour for a Practical Machinist. A uh, little history about the company. Um, started in 2017 as a welding and fab business called Van Welder, which you can see on the door. And I did literally anything and everything, welding, fabrication related, um, but kind of found my niche in stainless later on, um, which led us to get our first laser in 2020. Um, just because we're dealing with quality issues with, you know, cut parts and lead times, things like that. Um, it's also when COVID hit, so it took about a year for us to get our first machine, um, which was a import 3KW laser. Um, and then after about a year of running that machine, um, I kind of started getting burned out from welding and fab um, and decided to kind of lean more into the laser side. Um, which ultimately took off. Um, and so in 2020 is when we started Laser Bros, kind of diving 100% into the laser cutting side. Um, and that's where we're at now. So the shop we're in now is a 40 by 100. Um, we've been here for about four years and it is rather full, which you will see. But I'm excited to show you guys around the shop and show you what we do. We're starting in the back of the shop, which is where we keep all of our material storage. So we keep about 60 different materials on hand so that we don't have to um, wait for material deliveries to show up. Um, so if we get an order for something, we have the material on hand, we can start the order right away and less, less lead time. Um, we use cantilever racks for our material storage. Um, before that, we were just using these same wooden pallets to stack pallets on top of each other, which worked in the beginning, but it ends up taking a lot of time. So we, um, we worked on developing and building these cantilever racks, which has been a huge time saver because um, this allows us to, um, you know, get a, get a sheet of material off without having to unstack anything. And we can also work in multiple materials at the same time. So, um, and then on the pallets themselves, we have uh, combines. So this, um, this is how we know when to reorder stuff. Um, this is a lower, low, lower popularity item. So it's just as needed, but for some of our more popular stuff, um, like this combine has been pulled. So this material is on order. Um, you will have information on the Kanban, like the supplier part number, uh, the lead time, the quantity you need to order, and the minimum quantity that will trigger the order. So, um, all helpful information when you're, you know, working with lots of different materials and, um, you don't want to run out of stuff. So, as far as materials we carry, we have 304 stainless steel in both uh, 2B and number four finish. Um, not as much of the number four finish, uh, a lot of the 2B though. Um, we have some 316 grade stainless, but that's kind of more uh, based on customer requests because it's not as popular. Um, we've got lots of carbon steel ranging from one inch down to 18 gauge um, and aluminum grade 5052 uh, ranging from 032 up to half inch. So, um, and then we do have some 61, 60, 61 grade aluminum, but we don't stock that as much because again, it's not as popular. So, but we can get pretty much any metal that you need. So if it's metallic, we probably can cut it. This is Zuko, the shop dog. He is loved by all. He usually is found in the office sleeping, but Right now he's chilling, right? So now we're gonna move over to the laser cutting area. So here we have our Anver vacuum lift. So we got this actually pretty early on in Laser Bros because we quickly realized, you know, it was a big pain in the butt loading sheets by hand. So um, this one's got a 3000 pound capacity um, we've never gotten into that capacity, but it will handle a lot of weight and it does a good job. So you can kind of see the way this is configured. We come in with our sheet metal, um, in between the two lasers, 
we pick it up with the vacuum lift and we can move it onto either the 12 kW or we can move it on to the 3 kW. So this, this configuration's worked pretty well. Um, it's not ideal, but with the space constraints we have, this was the best solution we had at the time. So um, also with the vacuum lift, we have these sweet little covers we use when switching between carbon steel and stainless and aluminum. So kind of like a little cap. So this allows us to quickly change between uh, carbon steel, where we use no covers, to clean material. And this keeps the um, contamination off the sheet, as well as uh, if there's oils on the pads, it won't transfer to clean stainless or clean aluminum. So um, this is a little, little hack that we found that's helped speed things up a lot. All right, so this is our 3KW fiber laser. This was the first machine we purchased back in 2020, 2021. Um, it's been a great machine. Uh, it's got dual 5x10 beds, um, IPG fiber source. Um, we pretty much use this now for only like 11 gauge and thinner materials. Um, it doesn't have the speed that the 12KW has, but it's still a very consistent machine. So. Um, yeah, and this uh, door is an example of how accidents do happen. It happens sometimes. So for a lot of our stainless and carbon steel cutting, we use nitrogen. So we're using 16 packs right now. We're looking at a nitrogen generation system further down the road. But for the most part, we use high pressure nitrogen. For our aluminum cutting, we actually use high pressure air. So this is a high pressure air compressor that produces 300 PSI of shop air. So we're able to cut all of our aluminum parts with air. So it's a little bit of cost savings over using something like nitrogen. So, so this is our 12 kW area. Um, this machine is actually turned off right now because it is approaching Friday at noon, which is when everybody cuts out. So. But this is a 12KW um, fiber laser. Again, it's a 5x10 bed with um, dual exchange tables. Um, this machine will cut a lot thicker than the 3KW. Um, I think our max capacity on this is about 3 quarters of an inch for stainless aluminum, and then about an inch and a half on carbon steel. So um, again, it has a high pressure air compressor for cutting our aluminum. Um, and then we also use nitrogen for cutting thick stainless and our lower uh, gauge material on carbon steel. Um, for anything thicker than, you know, 11 gauge on steel, we're using oxygen. A uh, big improvement that we did was an uh, end wall fan. Um, these machines put off a lot of heat and it was getting really warm in the shop. So that helps out a lot with getting uh, all the hot air out of here. So we're only two years old as far as uh, business goes, but we're always trying to improve and make things better. So one of the things we've done is uh, for nozzle organizing, we've made a little Kaizen foam, uh, you know, board for that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's always a work in progress. Um, you know, working to make things better. Look. Band-Aids, we're very safe around here. But, yeah. So one thing we do um, for uh, quality, since we run so many varying parts and it's hard to measure some parts that might have features that are hard to determine a good way to measure it, um, something we've done is anytime we nest a job since uh, what we call compensation or the amount that you uh, compensate for the cut is baked into the whole sheet layout. We always insert a QC part. So this is an example of our QC part. Um, the things we check is one, we check against the print for tolerance on these um, holes, which always stay the same and the OD that stays the same. And if we have any kind of variance outside of two to three thousandths, we adjust the compensation before running any customer parts. 
The other thing we're looking at is we're trying to compare edge quality. These would be an example of our best edge quality. So we find a better setting, we save that parameter, and that is the new standard. So we always pull the QC part, check the tolerance, check the edge quality, make sure it's up to spec, and if it's good, we proceed to run uh, customer's parts. Hi. All right, uh, so we have our press brake, which is an electric machine. Um, it's 50 tons, 72 inches of bend length. Um, what we can bend over that length is gonna be determined by the tonnage and the thickness of the materials. All right, Josh, put the solitaire away. Uh, nesting is planning out how different parts will fit on a sheet. All right, there's an example of nesting. So these are actually a shop cart nest so we just use this to plan out how we're going to do our cuts and what our material usage is going to be and then it gets sent to the lasers so here we have our easy sander which is for linear finishing metal um, we use this a lot for aluminum and stainless um, it's a single head machine so we typically do like a 120 grit belt um, and that does a good job on most of our materials so You'll probably also notice we got a bunch of different bread racks laying around. We like to use those for storing parts. All right, so we do a lot of finishing with DA and orbital sanding. Um, it's very labor intensive, but we get really good results. And we also handle your parts a lot, which means we catch defects um, a lot more than if we didn't finish them or use some other methods. So. And we got different uh, means to deburr things. This is a home built uh, kind of flap wheel is what we call it. Um, it works pretty good on stainless and aluminum. We also got a, a unitized wheel that we use for edge deburring stainless and aluminum parts. So over here we got our tumblers. So we have a stainless and aluminum tumbler and we have a carbon steel tumbler and then we have a dryer. So. So after they've been tumbled, they go into the dryer for a few minutes. The corn cob uh, gets the moisture off of them and keeps the parts from getting uh, a nasty film on them or anything from the water. So these are also uh, our own design, the tumblers are. So we built these about a year ago and they've been working good. All right, so now behind me we have the shipping department. So um, probably 80% of the orders we do get packaged and shipped. So this is the office. Um, this is where you'll find me most of the time. Um, I handle all of our quoting and job related stuff. So. Why am I standing next to a refrigerator? <laughs> so the mission of Laser Bros is to support the American innovator. And the purpose behind that is because we want to help people grow their businesses, um, whether that is a you know small shop just starting out in the garage, um, or if it's a large corporation, we, um, we want to be there to help them and support them. And a large part of that is um, Having the machinery to do jobs, which a lot of people don't have the, you know, capital to go out and have a laser or a press brake. So that's kind of our purpose in all this is to provide you guys with the parts you need without having to um, go out and, you know, buy a laser, buy a press brake, um, to have the ability to get the parts you need, have good quality on your cuts, your bends, um, and get them within, you know, days, not weeks or months, um, is kind of what we're here, we're here for. So um. from Zuko at Laser Bros, we thank you for watching this video.